This is my feedback to you on your briefing paper on a GM traveling to a country of your choice to which she'd never visited. Your criteria, there were five. The critical executive summary, short to the point. And then two related pieces or sections, what to do and what not to do. The potential market for your products, which is an analysis. And finally, a suggested elevator speech that she might give uh, to potential customers. First point, a title. If I were a GM, this title would really grab my attention. It's business oriented, penetrating the Brazilian market. What you need to know. Let's look at two examples of executive summaries. Definitely what you're looking for in length. Notice also the easy to read bold headings of a business memo. Here's another example. It's short to the point and using the business approach of bullets. But wait, parallelism of this grammar. By increasing our market, this would increase our profit margins. OK. This would increase our ability to expand nationally, would increase knowledge of our products worldwide, would increase an increase in jobs is not English. So this part has to be reworked for parallelism. This is a very common uh, error that's made. And it can easily be avoided if you just do what I did. This would increase our profit margins. Yeah, I can say that. This would increase our ability to expand. Yes, but this is wrong because it needs to be nationally. This would increase knowledge of our products. I can say that. This would increase an increase in jobs. No, I can't say that. That's how you do it. Just say it aloud to yourself, and you'll know whether it's right or wrong and correct accordingly. Now, here was a very nice use of bullets in the list. There is, however, an inconsistency. Do not, do not. Don't, don't. Remember, in formal writing, there are no contractions. I would say that that is, I'll give Grant and say, uh, a typo. But excellent listing. However, one suggestion, if this is a bullet point, you can list these, you can adjust in Word and have a different uh, feature that would list them down like an arrow. I'm sorry, I don't mean Word. I mean in PowerPoint. There's a drop down choice of what these could be. Here's an example of a nice intro to the elevator speech. When asked about our company, we have prepared the following targeted response. Quote, and then nicely closing it off. With these prepared remarks, we can quickly inform potential customers of the benefits of our technology and how it blends in with the customs of Brazil. If you're going to have a quote, you want some kind of closing statement. This is a really good example. Here are a few sentences that have grammatical or typo or editing errors. Take a look at this one. Here it is. It wouldn't be caught in spell check because that's a word. 
Unfortunately, it's the wrong word. H-I-G-H-E-R is what's required. This is kind of an example of how you can't, and I can't, just rely on little red and green squiggles. Now here, on the memo, because it's in Word, I'm reading it. And I see the error right there in front of me. Of course, just go in, delete a space, and the error is gone. Imagine the CEO reading this paper and right away, ooh, there's an error, and they had it in Word and they didn't catch it. Hmm. Okay, that's underlined in green. There's something grammatically wrong, and it's actually right over here hyphenated, spork-friendly food served. And this was a neat one because they listed the kind of foods that would be spork-friendly. Now take a look at this sentence. First of all, I'm I'm sure, I am sure you have heard of our product before, but do you really understand what our product is? What's wrong? You're right. That's a question. So, but, comma, quotation mark, capital do, uh, capital D. Okay, I'm reading the memo in Word, and right away, I see something underlined in green, which means there's something odd in grammar. But if I right-click it, I get two possible grammatically correct replacements. The dress code for business meetings is similar to those of other European countries. Dress codes for business meetings are similar to those of other European countries. Here it is, friends. Technology has enabled perfection. Now, here's an example of the feedback we get when you submit the paper through the automatic plagiarism system. This is an example. This was in the paper. And right away, it, it came to my attention because it was underlined in green, and I knew, of course, there was a spacing. Then I noticed that it had been copied from the Internet, and the system tells me where it was copied from. In this particular case, this whole item was copied from the internet and again from number one I know where it came from now again all of the blue was copied from the internet 29 percent match for the entire paper This is what we would be looking for as faculty members. Zero percent match. Nothing copied from the internet. Here's a little feedback on what you would be saying to a CEO or a general manager. Do a little research. Go to the US Commercial Service Market Research Library and get research reports on. Now that's all nice, correctly written, but if you're a worker, it's your responsibility to get the research reports on and provide the input, not the GMs. Here's another example of using proper format in terms of bullets. but an issue in parallelism. This is a sentence. 
They are a bureaucracy. They have a complex tax system that differs with an S. And then you drop using the sentence format. You either have to stay full sentence format or full phrase format. That is correct business writing. I hope that this 10 minute video has given you some insight into the writing process for this particular project.